Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Menu Trudet, and welcome back to Rome Total War, where last time our cunning plan to attack Alexandria and then Memphis down in the south of Egypt while the Egyptians were distracted with Julianus Vertinius has not gone quite according to plan, because the Egyptians had one more huge army than I was actually expecting. So if we want to take Memphis right now, we're going to have to beat a huge amount of reinforcements before they can actually get inside the city. Let's see if we can pull this off with Manius Barbatus, who unfortunately is extremely inexperienced. His only real experience is that he's not very good at farming, and also he's a good defender. We're attacking right now, so that doesn't help very much. There we are, Memphis, a huge city, but I'm not interested in that city right now. I need to come round here, because some reinforcements are going to be coming from the south. They're going to be coming from about... Ooh, that's not good. They're going to be coming from, like, this point pretty much. We're not quite here on the road. More like here equal to the the gate or thereabouts. So they're going to come in here and then they're going to basically try and walk straight for the city. I can only start way over here. Oh, that's going to be really difficult. But I might at least be able to pick apart, say, a few of them before they get to the city. Actually, there's another option. Which is, I could try and delay them while I get inside the city and just start basically trying to take the gates. Because there's nothing in this city but cavalry. It's the general on his heavy cavalry and two units of uh, Nubian cavalry to support. If I could just get inside this city and climb up into one of the towers, then actually, once that's done, I could just run around and I could seal that gate. Once we've sealed that gate, yeah... Now that, that is a good plan. Right, okay. Let's make that happen as my backup. My onagers are going to be way over here. And they are basically just going to take down this wall. And then one unit of infantry is going to run in here, run up this tower, and then desperately try and get to the gates before these reinforcements can. It's going to be tight, and it depends whether or not they run. Uh, because if they're walking, I should have time to do it. Right, there's no one particularly obvious to do that, so instead it's just going to be one unit of Principes who are going to hang out here, and yeah, they're just going to run in the moment the way is open. The rest of my army needs to be over here to try and catch as many of these guys off guard before they can get to the city. So you guys, incidentally, you go in your own little group to mark you as special. And by the way, don't forget to put on fire at will, and also guard mode. Yeah, this doesn't look like a big force. Right. Start the battle. Now, they have started coming in. Straight away, my onagers start taking apart this wall. That wall should go down pretty quickly, right? Yeah, you've started firing immediately. Those prinky pairs are ready to move in. I need to have a look at what we've got here. Actually, the one advantage we do have, their battle line's quite wide. So I might be able to get, like, a few of their chariots. And if I can get their chariots, I might be able to pull the rest of their phalanxes in. I would say, start just running forward towards those chariots as quick as you can, please. Thank you. So everyone just, yeah, guys, guys, get, run, guys, your, your orders are to run. Your orders are to run, guys. Rhodian Slingers, this this includes you. This, this is literally everyone. Guys, there we go. We've got a bit of a delay going on here, possibly because Manius Barbatus is utterly terrible at everything. Uh, but we do at least have, oh, wait, hang on, oh. This isn't what I was expecting to see. This isn't what I was expecting to see. So it would appear that potentially the chariots are going to go and try and flip in ambush my actual things. Okay, hang on. If the chariots are going to try and ambush my principes and my actual flipping catapults, that's no good in the slightest. You guys are just... Some of them do appear to be sprinting in this direction. I just don't know whether they're actually going for... For me or not? Right, I need to use my cavalry to hold off these guys, which I don't really like doing because cavalry are not well suited to taking on flipping uh, chariots, but we may have to. Guys, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, why aren't you guys firing at well? I feel like you should be, quite frankly. Uh, okay, go, 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 go. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Go, go, release the dogs, release the hounds, release all of the dogs, release dogs versus chariots. I've no idea what that looks like. In comes the... Okay, they've broken immediately because of morale penalties and whatever. So that's good. So we've taken out at least some of them. The war dogs are going to take some damage in a hurry. In come the camels. Day late and a dollar flipping short. In come some more Egyptian chariots. We're just basically going to try and ride these guys out. This is not going to work out well for us. Uh, but with the dog support, they might actually break, especially as the camels will actually mean that their morale is lower than it should be. So we're actually doing a pretty good job just cutting through these things. Right, 
forward. More Egyptian chariots. More dogs. Uh, are these guys going to break? Or are we going to break first? Because we're taking really heavy and fast losses here too. More losses. More losses. I think we've pretty much cleared out their chariots at least. Yep, I think we are winning that fight. Just chariots. And they have broken. Right, and we've got... Oh, gosh darn it. The Nubians have responded. They're actually going to try and fill the breach. That's really annoying. Well, we've taken out the chariots at least, but we've sacrificed most of our flipping cavalry to do it. But the dogs are coming in. The dogs are coming in in the actual to our advantage. And that is light cavalry. It's light cavalry and it's not very much. I need to get my guys in there, like, right now. Support the flipping dogs, damn it. Also, the onagers can help. The Onagers can just put a couple of, like, giant stones on top of the Nubian cavalry. Why not? Let's just weaken those guys a little bit before our flipping Brinkipes get in. Oh, gosh darn it. The flipping General's responding as well. He knows this is where the breach is. I was expecting him to hang out on the flipping thing. Right. These guys have decided to come out to, to here. Right. You guys now probably need to stop. The dogs are... I don't know what the dogs are doing. Right. The Brinkipes have indeed managed to just about kind of make touch with the Nubian Cavalry. I just don't really know what they're planning to do about the Nubian Cavalry and where the rest of the army is. That appears to be coming up to the gate very slowly and I've no way of getting into that gate now, unfortunately. But we should be able to kill Light Cavalry very, very easily here. So Nubian Cavalry is going down. Yeah, that's going down very fast. It's already just shaken. These guys are taking a knock, but yeah, that is broken. Right, now I just need to get up. Yeah, where's the general? No sign of him. Right, get inside the city. Get inside the city right now and up on the walls. We can take some of the walls. That means they'll take a load of knocks from the wall defences. Alright, this can still flipping work. Oh, wait. So, it would appear that the, um, the reinforcement army has kind of changed its mind about what it wants to do. But this still works. Because if they actually want to fight a fight over here, then if I take the walls, I just move my army over here. I can just let the wall defences do the majority of the heavy lifting. Guys, I need you to get up there right now before the general shows up. Okay, he seems to have backed off. Good. That was their one chance. They could stop me get up on the walls with the general. I just need to start slowly backing off now. They've thrown away their cavalry, but in all fairness, I've kind of thrown away all of mine too. So I just need to start slowly moving my troops more in this direction, ready to be closer to the walls. Who is that over there? Who's trying to come in? I think that's that's more flipping cavalry. Right, my Prinkipes are obviously taking a knock because they would do. But we have actually taken... Yep, we've taken our first tower. So our guys are now here and there's going to be no one to oppose them on the walls. Get my guys over here. As fast as they can, take the wall defences. Okay, now we've got... Oh, those guys are flipping going for... Are they going for my onagers or are they going for the... The walls. I don't know. Right, at this point, we might just be able to pin these guys between our... Yeah, we might be able to pin these guys between the walls and us. Right, this is this is a ridiculous fight all of a sudden, but I'm happy with how it's going. Guys, also run. You're going to be wanting to speed up here. Okay, seriously. Are they going for my... Where are you going? I think they are. I think they're going for my actual things. Right, if they're going for there... I need all my cavalry to go and relieve my flipping onagers. These onagers will do a surprisingly good job fighting, but at this point, we've taken this tower. Oh, yeah. The towers are shooting you down now. Screw you. Right, guys, 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 guys. Oh, flip. Where's the flipping cavalry? The cavalry is now charging in over here. You guys need to... Just everyone just needs to stop for a second, pretty much. Aside from the guys who are charging off. You guys all need to stop, okay? Because these guys are the really tough ones. They're charging in, but they'll be hit by... The They've broken immediately. Which is quite frankly weird, but whatever. Uh, so those guys over there are going to go... Oh, my onages have broken. That's a shame. But these guys are now walking past towers, which are actually under my control. Which is really, really good. And the desert... Oh, the desert cavalry is actually, as it turns out, the leader. Oh, this is perfect. He, he kind of put himself way out of the way. I assumed... The flipping kind of elite guys over there will be the leader, but no, it appears not. Their leader's dead. Oh, that's going to be problematic for all of this. Right, guys, and you... Oh, now nothing can stand up to us. Now nothing can stand up to us. Right, okay. Guys, 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 guys. Get everything out of here. More flipping Nile cavalry coming in. Uh, oh, that's going to be a problem. But the camels will help. Get the camels involved. They will not be happy because, yeah, there's camels going around here. They're already wavering because they just don't like those camels. My camels have broken immediately, but that's fine. Uh, so my army is now... Oh, everything's weird. Everything's going really, really weird. So they've broken and so have I, but that's fine. We can ride most of them down immediately. Beautiful. 
And they still don't know what they want to do, to be honest. I've got loads of archers just basically shooting these guys. Slingers, yeah, they're not going to do a good job. Let's get my cavalry back over here, please. The camels have just naffed off. Who knows where they're going? Um, but... And also, where are the onagers? Oh, the onagers have been really badly damaged, which is so sad. But I'd say this is fine. Don't actually charge in. Don't actually charge in. Just send my troops around here ready to flank. Because at this point, these guys are just going to be attacked forever by the towers. They've got themselves caught in an opposition. They can't go for the breach in the walls, because if they do, I'll be behind them. They can't go for that gate anymore, because I've literally sealed that gate away, so there's nothing they can do. <laughs> oh, this, this was not the most efficient way you could get to this gateway, but whatever. You, you go for it. Whatever you say. Now, any troops that run along here will just be slowly picked apart by the towers, which is marvellous. And over here, these guys don't really know what they want to do. Because, yeah, they're being attacked by my archers from one side. I just need to get my... If I can get my cavalry around the other side. Let's just get the cavalry around the other side here. And my camels are over there as well. My camels are back in the game. Get the camels back over here. Marvellous. Yeah, these phalanxes don't really know what it is they want to do exactly. If they walk over there, my archers just get to shoot them in the back. I'm happy with that, quite frankly. In fact, weirdly, their morale seems to have started collapsing immediately. Their morale's actually collapsing, which means now I think I should just be able to basically... Oh! Oh, the archers are just shooting them in the back over and over. Oh, this looks so bad for them. And there's more flipping towers yet that belong to me. I think at this point, probably my faction leader, assuming we just kind of have him kind of safely out of the way, can probably just charge into all of these guys and we're just looking at complete total flipping collapse. Oh, yes! Manius Barbatus, well flipping done. Don't get yourselves too caught out, though. There are still ones that have not broken yet. Right, I need to send one unit of Equites over there to mop up the people that are fleeing before they start causing trouble for us later. Um, everyone else needs to basically just focus on the ones who aren't yet broken. Where are the flipping camels? Get the camels back in the fight, damn it. Oh, the general's come to relieve. The general is coming to relieve. I see him there. The flipping heavy cavalry are coming. Right, get back outside the city. Just mop up as many of these guys as we can. We don't want to get caught by the general. We will break immediately. Just get into the back of these guys. Get to the back of these guys. Get to the back of these guys. And Equites into the back of you. You'll probably break immediately. Wavering. Not quite. Not flipping quite. Get away from them. And everyone, I think, finishes breaking. Now, the general in the city is trying to basically try and protect these guys, but he's not going to do very well. And now we are just mopping them up. Oh, yes. This is looking very, very good indeed. And we've barely even committed our flipping infantry yet. The only question now is how much of that army was actually able to get inside the city before we were able to ride it down and just hit these guys from multiple sides and they will break immediately. Those are the Nubians and down they go. Beautiful. In we go. Murder to the last man. That is the last phalanx. Oh, this has turned out to be an utter slaughter here. Oh, this has been beautiful. Like, we have lost a lot of horsemen doing this, but I'd say this could not have actually turned out hugely better. I'd say my plan has worked pretty darn well. Right, now we need to take stock because there's a lot of stuff in the city. Like, a lot of stuff did get through. We didn't catch all of it. What have we got here? But most of it is tiny. Tiny units. The odd, like, tiny, tiny little phalanx. Just odd men that managed to slip through. To be honest, this is all looking very, very good indeed. You are... Are you actually the... Not the general, right? No, you're not the... Oh, maybe you... No? I can't tell. One of the guy's face is inside a pole, but I'm pretty sure that's not actually the general. No, there's the general. We found the general. So you, you are the guy who is leading this place. Didn't actually train any troops last turn. Very, very bad idea indeed. My Brinker Bears, incidentally, just happened to be directly above some Nile cavalry. Uh, so we can use our peeler to great effect from on top of the wall here. Yep, I'd say that works very, very nicely indeed. And they break immediately. Lovely. Now, probably this is going to be the best approach for us, by the way. Uh, if we just basically uh, walk around to the gateway we've taken, and then we can just walk into the centre of the town nice and easy. Right, speed up time while my troops just make their way over in this direction. Feels like the... The Egyptians are trying to launch, well, I'd say a counter-offensive, but there's barely anything here. And if they dare step into this kind of whole street here, we've taken all of these towers. They can't get close to us, but they've detected we're inside the city in the streets. And they want to go and deal with those Brinker Pairs, but it's not going to work out for them. At this point, there's so little left. Anything that tries to counter these Brinker Pairs will just be torn to shreds by the towers. It's not going to stop them trying, though. They're sending in some Nubian light cavalry that are just being, oh, no. 
Oh, guys. The guys, guys, guys. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm just going to put these guys into guard mode. I don't actually want them to. Yep. They decided to give up because they've been shot from every angle. Chariot's just being taken apart as well. They'll at least do some good work. But if they decide to... Yep. They've decided they do actually want to take the fight to the Prinkipairs. Guys, prepare yourselves. You do actually have incoming, just not very much. And no, those guys broke immediately. And they're also going to try and retreat through you. So just cut them down while they come, if you'd be so kind. Irritatingly, yes, even broken chariots do actually do damage to your units just because of the spikes. So I've just lost like uh, five men to already broken chariots, which is kind of irritating. We're up to 93% of the enemy killed to only 13% me killed. I thought this was going to be a really difficult battle. I think I've handled this really well, by the way. I think we've just done a really, really solid job here. Right, just bringing up the infantry into the town. The one unit that actually stormed the walls. That are the big heroes of this battle. Aside from the camels. I feel like the camels actually did a surprisingly good job too. But at this point, anything trying to come up here is basically walking directly into some towers I control. So it's not going well for them. The towers have slowly worn everything down, and we've actually got a siege engineer here as well. That's marvellous. There is now nothing left. What is cowering on the plaza? A handful of the Nile cavalry and the general himself. All we need to do now is set up just a lovely big trap on this open space here. That'll be 100% fine. Lure him into it, and life will be good. Okay, this should do. We've got our mercenary hoplites ready to go together with a ton of flipping prink pair support behind and to the side. Now if I just tell my archers to get some shots in at the Egyptian general, that should lure him in here and then we can just murder him. There he goes. They've detected it. They've detected it. They're coming in. They're coming in. Right, archers, get back out of there. No, this way. No, I feel like you've brought this on yourselves at this point. I told you to run. There you go. Now you've figured out you're supposed to be running. Marvellous. Now we're going to have Peeler coming in. You're going to chase those guys straight into a phalanx. And as soon as that happens, close the door on them. Push through them. And we've also got ourselves, uh, just break the formation, and just be in guard mode right now. And now just close the door, make sure they don't break. The hoplites, sadly, have kind of lost some of their integrity. They're a little bit too close on the should have them more at an angle, to be honest. But they'll do the job, and the Prinkipairs will just slowly close in behind these guys. So as a result, yeah, when these guys do enough to be break, when they realise they're surrounded, they'll be cut down to the last man. Yep, the trap is closing. These guys are shaken, but by the time they realise they ought to be wavering and retreating, it will indeed be too late. The prink bears will cut them down. They're being hacked down very quickly now, and job will momentarily be done. Though possibly, because he's way over here, the actual leader himself might actually escape when all the rest of his guys die. Nope, they've realised it's all gone wrong. The question is, will the leader get out of there? No, he's decided to run. Nope, he ran into spears and it didn't go well for him. As the intro to the game says, Roman steel in a brutii fist. That's what we need here. First up, the Nile Cavalry is leading one final tragically incompetent defence. And they will indeed kill a few Prinkipairs, but they will be murdered almost immediately afterwards. Yeah, down they go. And in fact, the last man is one final Nubian spearman left over from earlier. The last survivor of the massacre outside the walls. I don't think he's going to last. The day is ours! Indeed it is. Manius Barbatus, you have done very, very well for yourself. You've done much better than I expected. Though, to be honest, I think I came up with a really good plan and executed it pretty well. That was a fun battle. That is a very unusual battle as well, the way that unfolded. But that was really cool. And there in the distance is the Great Pyramid, and that now belongs to us. Memphis moves under arm control. Kaboom. Exterminate the population, of course. Lovely. And the wonder has been captured. The Great Pyramid. This, of course, does basically literally nothing, aside from meaning there are no Egyptian culture penalties anymore, which is very useful because it means Alexander has just gone from, like, you know, blue unhappy face to now so happy I can put up the tax rate because they're now happy enough with me, even though there's basically no one there right now, which is great news. And indeed, Thebes has not been retaken, so we can go and retake that at our convenience. Marvellous. Meanwhile, if we go and have a look, say, here at Sidon, Sidon has suddenly gone up to plus 205% happiness. So we can put the tax rate up there quite a lot. Two things going on over here in Africa. Can't have noticed the Scipiones aren't showing much intention to head back over to Dingy. But also, in addition, can't have noticed the Numidians possibly are out for revenge. They have sent a small but not insignificant army over towards Kirta to try and take it back. 
and Kirta is almost undefended. Now that, that is really interesting. That does of course mean we can get rid of the awesome Temple of Horus over here in Memphis by the way. And with that done of course we're straight back to worshipping good old Juno, we like Juno. Because yeah we've actually got, well actually, I could go for Mars down here, there's almost no point, but in theory the Scipiones might try and attack me down here in Egypt if I take Siwa or they do, which one of us is going to do. So it might not hurt to have an actual, yeah, proper training facility down here for new troops. Hmm, the problem is Memphis is such a long way away from everything, but it does have everything I could ever need. It's already got the flipping cavalry stables, army barracks, siege engineers. Oh, go on then, sure. Why not? Shrine to Mars. This place will be a happy, happy place. We'll leave someone down here. You've got... Oh, you went straight up to local hero. Well done, man is Barbatus. You did indeed win a great victory there. Well done. And at this point, things are looking very, very grim for the Egyptians, I would say. Because what have they got down here? They've got, like, Petra, which is just a town that's already actually in a state of rebelling. Because they've got nothing there. They've got Bostra, a large town, barely even garrisoned. So really, at this point, all their hopes are pinned on... Jerusalem. And honestly, Jerusalem's not looking that well defended. It's not even got a proper wall, damn it. You're gonna regret that decision. Right, I think I know what we need to do now, actually. I've got a pretty good idea, which is over here in Palmyra. One, we need Spurious Scapula. Now that we've got Palmyra under control and the Egyptians obeying us pretty well, thanks to the fact we've seized the Great Pyramid, this army can now afford to leave Palmyra anytime it wants to. I need to move these troops round here, and I want to use these to besiege this camp right here. So around the outside, down here, besiege this camp. Now if we just lower the tax rate, Palmyra will be perfectly happy with us because there's now no culture penalty. Now, I don't quite have a full army here. What I do have is I'm just in range to receive these reinforcements coming in from the north. So that's just a little bit more on the actual heavy infantry side. So that should be enough heavy infantry. I don't know whether I even want to actually try and smash into this place, or whether rather I just starve them out because it's only three days. Spurious Scapula may play things a little bit more cautiously. I mean, if Julianus Vitidius was here, they'd already have surrendered, damn it. But that's taken this army out of doing anything other than trying to actually kind of sally forth for this next turn. And that's all I need for the minute. Because that frees up Julianus Vitidius to continue his march south. Because sure, he's taken Damascus, but he's not wanting to just sit in Damascus and do his own thing. No, 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 no. There are Egyptian armies on the field just the south of him. He's going out and he's going to flipping murder them. So, have the entire army step outside. We just need something to hold the fort here. Uh, Sidon, could you send around some... Yes, perfect. Sidon can send around some mercenaries just to hold the town here. Now, Damascus is not exactly happy, but if we lower its tax rates to normal, it is 100% happy because it's just a crap little town, so it doesn't need much. And now we just move forward and attack this army right here. Let's get them off the field, because that will open up the path to Jerusalem. In we go. There we are, lovely. So we've got 2,698 men. They've got, okay, they've got the numerical disadvantage, but there are some elite troops in there. They have actually got Pharaoh's guards and Pharaoh's bowmen. The last of their kind we shall ever see, most likely. I doubt the Egyptians are in a position to train any more. Other than that, however... A lot of basic crappy lands. Okay, basically, if we just start the route here, we can wrap up most of the line. Lots of damaged guys here as well. Yeah, I think we can just walk in and just basically smash this. And the captain is coming in with reinforcements. Scattered selection of troops, nothing particularly important. Right, Julianus Vitinius up to... Oh, yes, this man's sound grasp of strategy and tactics inspire confidence in all those who follow him into battle. He's very humble, Julianus Vitinius. Actually, he's much better than that. That's how he describes himself, because he's very humble. Now, what have we got here? A big body of water right next to us, and it's pretty flat, to be honest. There's not really much in the way of high ground to be had here, is there? No, it's all pretty much much of a muchness. Nice to have a bit of water here. That's always lovely indeed. Go up to that, and you'll even actually hear the water lapping against the shore. Lovely touch, always appreciated that. Now, let's just draw up some troops up here, and we'll see what happens next. Where were the reinforcements coming from, by the way? Yeah, we'll be taking on these guys, and the reinforcements will be behind them, so we can't really get to the reinforcements early, so that's fine. Let's just draw up nice and far back here, because if they actually decide they want to move up against us, we will then have the high ground. So I'm just going to quickly draw up here. Right, pretty much the same formation we had in the previous battle. It worked pretty well then. Let's see how it goes now. 
Right, looks like they're falling back into a position where they potentially will be able to join up with their reinforcements. That's fine. But actually, no. They're falling more over there. I think they're possibly trying to take high ground up on that hill over there. That's fine. Let's just speed things up as we move towards them. Okay, before we could get up to them, they managed to combine their forces into one larger army. So, we've got chariots on this side and probably more chariots on the... No! No chariots on the other side. Some chariots at the rear that I think are acting as the commander. Yes. And then, well, they've only got one bit of indirect fire that poses any threat. It's this bit right here. So really, probably what I want to do is, because this over here is, uh, yeah, light cavalry, light cavalry, and just more light cavalry. If I could just hit my heavy cavalry over here, I could take these guys out of the fight, like, immediately. And then this is where I could start wrapping up. Because at the same time, this is also Desert Axemen. Okay, those are the tough phalanxes, but I could just start rolling up the Desert Axemen up this end. That's okay. Or... If I could just lure these guys forward into my hoplites, then potentially I could have... Yeah, I could roll it from this end. And we've got... Oh, no. Those are the those are the Ferris guards. Fine. They put their elite uh, phalanxes at either edge, which is actually quite clever because it stops me rolling them up quite as effectively. I do, however, see that I need to actually change my formation around slightly because the chariots are going to be on that side. So I'm just going to quickly ungroup. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my hoplites to this side and my triarii to the other. And the spearmen just swap their positions to be a little bit more on the appropriate side. Lovely and lovely. And you guys, put your spears down, please. And now we have got ourselves our new improved formation. Lovely. I'm just going to just go a little bit further forward. I might be able to bait their pharaoh's bowmen forward a little bit. If I can, I'd like to be able to do that. In fact, I'd be happy just to deal with them arch to archer and kind of counter arch those guys. I'd be okay with that. I'm going to move one of my slingers more over in this direction. I might be able to get a shot in at their chariots and see if I can lure the chariots forward straight into a trap. So if I take the chariots out immediately, that'll be a good starting point. So you guys go over here, like right over here, far away from those stupid bowmen, and then see if you can get an attack in at those heavy chariots, because you're almost in range already. Here we go. A little bit exposed out here, my slingers, but they'll get a good attack in. And in a minute, those guys should respond. As soon as the first one dies, at least, they'll respond. First one goes down, and first two go down, in fact. No response. Well, if they're not going to respond, I'm just going to take out their chariots, because slingers do very, very well at taking out chariots. High rate of fire, lots of stones coming in. They're going to go down really fast. Fine. I'm just going to take out their chariots if they're not going to bother defending them. I think we've got a sandstorm sweeping in. First time we've seen this. Yeah, would you believe sandstorm's bad for visibility? And also, they're going to tie my troops out, but the Egyptians are a little bit more used to dealing with them. Right, now, before we finish the chariots off, switch target over to the Axemen, because they're incredibly poorly defended as well. We should do a really good job destroying them. So, in come the stones. Yep, that's fine, but will you react more to... No, you're not going to react to your Axemen coming under attack. These guys have got basically no armor, so we may as well just destroy them as well. Right, well, that's happening over there, and we're just slowly taking pot shots at the Desert Axemen. Let's move into the attack on the other side, which is their flipping light cavalry. Let's get my lovely Roman cavalry, my lovely heavy guys here, and go on. The Sarmatians can join in too. These guys can move over here and slam in over here and take out your light cavalry. Let's get them out of the way. Right, these guys right out onto the flank here. I just want these guys to smash into these guys and just see off the light Nubian cavalry right now. Because that leaves their flanks wide open. Oh, hello, they're moving. They're on the move. I think they've seen my cavalry moving and they're trying to move to counter it. But that's actually fine. Because if they do that, no, don't. They're trying to... My flipping guys are trying to... Nope, you've immediately broken. Now just go forward. What even is this? What What are you? What even are you? I don't know what you are. There's just some flipping desert cavalry, but they're going to run straight into my hoplite saying, you know what? Just kill these guys. Kill these flipping bastards. There you go. Right, the leader of the reinforcements has gone down. My poor rodent slingers have just taken a ridiculous amount of damage just for some flipping desert cavalry because they didn't run the right way when I told them to retreat, which is annoying. Guys, get back into cover please thank you lovely now a few things are moving forward what's moving forward here the the slingers are moving forward the pharaoh's bowmen are probably firing at me at this point or they're going to start in a second this cavalry over here has done a really good job confusing the egyptians like crazy they don't know what to do about this 
Now they've started. Are they running? I think they're running. I think they're out of here. I think they've decided they don't want to fight this fight anymore. And who would against Julianus Vatinius, quite frankly? Right. There's one key target in that case. Guys, 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 guys. Get over here. Find me the Pharaoh's Bowman. I want them dead. Right. Triple heavy cavalry charge into the side of retreating phalanx. This should do good work here. Hopefully these guys will retreat immediately. And broken. Yep, fine. Okay, we can do a bit of damage on the way out at least. Pharaoh's Bowman. Oh, there's no, there's a normal Bowman. Darn it, we're not going to be able to do much good work here. I think the Pharaoh's Bowman have got out, which is a real shame. But that is, that is sad. Right, just go around here. These are Pharaoh's flipping guards and more Pharaoh's flipping guards. And now just into the rear. See if we can just get a lucky break on the Pharaoh's guards here. And just hit them from every side. Wavering. Shaker. No, they're, they're winning. They're winning. Back out. Back out. We're taking a lot of damage. Let's see if we can actually do this though. Come on. I want to get at least one unit of Pharaoh's guards down for all of this. No, they've escaped out. Fine. So those cowards have fled. But we've done a bit of damage to them. Yeah, we just got 400 kills and they just decided it was not worth their trouble. Right, continue. Let's see where they're going to retreat to, because I might be able to just chase them down and murder them. Okay, so the reinforcement army we basically destroyed is re retreating to Jerusalem. Is that where you're going to? Ooh. This is interesting, but a little bit unfortunate as well, because I can't... I don't think I can even get you this turn. If I could, it would pull the Pharaoh forward, which might be a little bit too much, just because this army's taking some knocks. I really need some reinforcements, but I can get those from Sidon, so that's fine. Right, Opius Victor, what can you contribute to this here army? Sends the damaged Roman cavalry in that direction. You've got... This guy's got no Roman cavalry here. Well, that's just bloody not useful. Ah, luckily, there is indeed some right here ready to come in in a minute. We've got a couple of decent units of actual early legionary cohorts. That's nice. In fact, you've got three of those. Okay, fine. So I might be willing to do you a swap because, yeah, these guys with 9, 13, 17 are... Well, actually, technically the Principes, because they're so upgraded, are actually better. <laughs> they're actually doing better for the minute, which is hilarious. Uh, but we still need to potentially start breaking these guys down. So, bring in some more flipping... Uh, okay. Break apart those Rhodian Slingers. All right, now, send me... I need more cavalry. I'm going to need more infantry. Perfect world. Yeah, you've actually got a damaged unit of Cretans that I can use to top up my lads. That is just perfect. Marvellous. In fact, actually... Let's top you up. Yeah, that's way better. Right, now you, you report back to Sidon. More damaged lads. Right, that's good. Now, send me your best quality uh, units here. Oh, and Julianus Vatinius has gone up to superior commander. Indeed, Manius Barbatus picked up confident commander. And even better, Julianus Vatinius has picked up clean hands as a trait. Because, of course, he understands the importance of washing your hands, personal hygiene, and also assassins. They're good too. So after this action-packed turn that's taken two flipping episodes to do, I think we're ready to actually end the turn here. But we're not quite done yet. The Egyptians might decide to sally, and the Julii might decide to attack over here in Spain. Though admittedly, just look at their armies. They're basically looking to, like, wipe out Spain in, like, a four-pronged attack in, like, a single day. This is going to be bad for the Spanish. But after that point, what did the Julii do then? Like, as far as I'm aware, they're not exactly in a good position to start a war with Britain. So, if the Civil War starts soon after that, that could actually work very much to my advantage. So, we end the turn with Julianus Vatinius just standing overtly outside the doors of Jerusalem, just daring anyone to come and attack him, because anyone who does is truly, truly screwed. And indeed, as I suspected, the Julii are going in against the Spanish town. They have got themselves... A small amount of solid enough infantry, one unit of war dogs, and some velites, uh, and the Spanish are defending with uh, honestly not much. But they do have some decent cavalry. That long shield cavalry, we've seen what that can do in the past. I would actually potentially say the Spanish have got the advantage here, just purely to the beauty. I have brought no cavalry. Ah, a fascinating half Carthaginian, half barbarian settlement here. So the Spanish took this place of the Carthaginians when it was already a minor city. The Spanish moved in, presumably did something bad to it. Yeah, it already had the large temple and everything. But since then, they've kept the execution square, but they've built like a warlord stables and a hall of heroes in the barbarian style. Doesn't that look cool? I love it when you've got kind of little kind of patchwork cities. Oh, there's something else over there as well. You build yourselves a weaponsmith. A weaponsmith, lovely. Right, weaponsmith right outside the execution square. Marvellous. Right, let's just go over here 
and then we can just join up with the battle very quickly, and then we'll see what's going to go on here. The thing is, when it's small numbers versus small numbers, at that point, just small things like tiny hits from the wall defences matter a lot. When I say tiny hits from the wall defences... You've basically got no flipping wall defences, do you? Looks to me like the Spanish are pretty much abandoning the walls and falling back to the plaza immediately, which I've got to say is probably the best thing they can do. Nope, they're sending one unit of Iberian infantry to try and hold the front gate. Not a good idea, to be honest. Those guys aren't going to do that well, unless it's... Oh, this is Velitas, actually. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one fight Iberian infantry versus Velitas. Fine, that'll go just fine for the Iberians. Assuming, of course, the Velitas even actually go in. They might just stand outside and toss in javelins. We don't know. What do you plan to do now? Are you plan to do anything? It looks like they're planning to just throw in some javelins rather than actually advance. Or they can just stand there looking threatening and not actually do anything at all. You know, whichever. Either works. Uh, here we go. Fine. The Velitas were waiting for something else to go in first. That's okay. Yeah, they'll do some good damage to the Velitas. Velitas aren't going to do very well against Iberian infantry. So they're going to get chewed up pretty quickly. In come some of those... Uh, yes, we've got ourselves Bull Warriors here. Admittedly, they're massively outnumbered. But they are tough lads, these lads. They will actually do a bit of damage to the Princapest before they go down. They've got themselves, yes indeed, like I was saying, like hypercharged Astarte, they've got the throwing thing, except they're heavy infantry, and they'll do a lot of damage, and they're eager even when they're massively outnumbered, and they're about to get javelined in response, and in come the war dogs, marvellous, and what's going on over here, ooh, what broke over there, just, oh, is there just one unit of, oh, there was just one unit of warhounds over there, fine, the Iberian infantry are doing a good job versus the Velitas, that could be a breaking point for the Judai, all they've got to do is do enough damage, and then a big cavalry charge, Enough damage and a cavalry charge, and they can actually force this entire army to break, especially if it gets tired down the line. But that unit's going to break immediately, because of course it's now been surrounded. So that really just raises the question, what's actually left at this point? Because to be honest, not much has been done aside from just like some, yeah, some light damage to Velitez. But other than that, basically no damage has been done to the Julii, so it really just comes down to the cavalry charge. I mean, they've got a good healthy amount of cavalry here. They have got themselves, I think, yeah, they've got some round shield and some long shield cavalry. This, charged together into the side of something, can cause a break, especially if they can just get these Iberians to just pin them in place when the charge comes. It just basically depends on how clever the computer is at doing the charge, and generally the answer's not very. In comes some naked fanatics, by the way. Of course, uh, just for the sake of decency and rating, they're not actually naked. Instead, on this occasion, they are wearing pants. The Junai are, however, already over to Windered, which is nice. No! No, this is not the right time to do your charge, but that's only the round shield. It's the long shield we've got to watch out for. The round shield doesn't really have, like, a proper charge in it anyway. To be honest, the round shield just basically is good at actually holding its ground and chunking its way through infantry. So these guys will do a good job. Actually, I suppose this isn't the worst thing in the world, because... Unless, of course, you decide you're going to try and run straight through infantry without attacking it, then that's going to go badly wrong for you, yes. Yeah, I'm not really sure what this cavalry's trying to do right now, aside from just get itself killed, but these guys will at least do a good job hacking down some Hastati, and again, just creating a good point to begin the round. So they can just do enough damage here, and you can see, you know, they've got swords, not spears. They've got good swords, they're good at just chopping in, but... That peeler throw might be enough to... Yeah, they broke immediately. But didn't actually do that much damage. They've broken at a good time. They've broken at a good time where they can get back and do another charge later. The problem is these Prinkipers. The Prinkipers at 116, who now appear to be almost at the front. Because they are going to be a difficult one to break. Long shield cavalry, don't get involved. Alright, seriously, do not get involved. And don't throw the skirmishes in as a front line! Why are you throwing them as a front line? No! This is a really stupid idea! <laughs> oh no. Never decide to just send in skirmishes as a front line to take out Prinkipaz. No, no. And don't send in the long shield cavalry! No! No, this is this is just stupid idea after stupid idea! Oh no, the long shields are going in, and they're going to turn a corner and not get a proper charge in, and their own javelin guys are going to flip in blunt the charge. No. Oh, that's that's a shame. It's nowhere near as good charge. They're like throwing everything they've got at this bottleneck, and throwing everything you've got at a bottleneck isn't the worst idea, but like against, no. Against a big group of flipping infantry, it's not going to fly, and the long shield haven't got the charge in. The Julia have won. Speed things up a little bit here. Yeah, without the charge, their leader's also gone down. They've backed off. 
They've still got the Iberians, which is fine, but yeah, they're running out of cavalry. They're running out of cavalry now. They've thrown their cavalry away way too early when they needed to save it for a big charge. In come the Iberians. That's all that's left now. And the Iberians aren't going to get enough damage to actually win this. So now it's just going to be a slow grinding victory for the Julii. If only you had some long shield cavalry right now that you could have, say, put over here and then slammed into the side of these exhausted and tired troops. If only that was a thing, Spain. Yeah, very clear victory for the Julii there. I can't deny them that. The Spanish were just really stupid. So with that, Julii gain another town. I'm going to move my Equitus back up here and try and figure out where I want to go next. Potentially, it's down here around Carthago Nova because that's pretty well defended and the army heading that way is... Decent but not huge. Or I might just want to wait over here for a last stand over here where they've actually got a proper full stack army. So if there's one thing that can hold the Julii, it might be that. Now we've got a couple of new daughters come into the family. Cornelius Brutus picks up the battlefield surgeon and Nero Brutus has come of age. Oh, he's even bolder. He's even flipping bolder. Oh, it's in the style right now. Julianus Vitinius has started to style. That kid, he had a full head of hair just a couple of years ago. Then the rumours started going around about this bold hero. And now Romans, they just all shave their heads because they want to look more like him. It's marvellous. So actually, you're not that bad. You are good looking because everyone now agrees that bold people are the most handsome people. Thanks to Julianus Vitinius, publicly loyal strict can get problematic but it's okay for now you know what i'm gonna give the tax farmer over to him anyway because it is at least somewhat useful um so you my good man you should go somewhere where you can actually have a good impact on the empire in terms of like trade and what have you how about thessalonica how would you like to go and manage thessalonica you'll need to get in there next turn that's fine and thessalonica does have a that's an academy right yes it already has an academy that's fine now, I've noticed we do actually have a rebel leader down here. Interestingly, if I look at his bodyguard unit, he is actually a unit of Eastern Infantry, not actually a leader. But if I actually buy him, he'll automatically become the sort of leader that exists in my army. So he'll just magic some heavy cavalry out of nowhere. He's 28 and okay-ish. I may as well have him on board, to be honest. Right, time for Manius Barbatus, the surprisingly competent hero, to actually gather an army to go and seize Thebes down in the south there. So if we take a long... Yeah, one Onager will do the job. We'll need to move that right there to make sure it can get there next turn. Yeah, let's just take a long... Everything good. We'll just need to merge a few bits and pieces together just to make sure we've got some good quality troops. Yeah, that army should have enough firepower just to actually get into the city. It's a surprisingly big rebel army. They are sometimes generated. So we'll go and deal with that. And potentially we'll then take these guys straight over into Libya and take Siwa. Because weirdly, yeah, the amount of territory the game just says you've kind of officially won by taking Libya is pretty much as big as the entirety of Asia Minor. Which feels a little bit unfair, but what have you. Which is why if you kind of look at the Scipiones Empire, like, you know, it looks somewhat impressive. But like next to me, it's vastly, vastly fewer territories. Even though like, you know, this whole space belongs to them. Because it's only like five territories. Meanwhile, over in Greece, five territories is that tiny little area right there. And Spurus the Ugly just keeps on moving around. Actually, if we just kind of separate out his... Yeah, if we separate out his cavalry units, he can actually move around a little bit faster. Marvellous. So yeah, Spurus the Ugly just keeps laying some watchtowers at the new north of the Empire. But to be honest, I'm not too worried by the Scythians just yet. They seem more concerned with going and taking over the Germans. And I think we can handle the Scythians if they do decide to come yet. So the Northern Frontier looks pretty damn solid. Dacia I think we'll leave alone for now just because there's not really much advantage to taking them over. But yes indeed. Next time ladies and gentlemen I think it is time for us to break the back of the Egyptians. Their king is cowering in Jerusalem. They have got one decent army they've managed to pull together here. Oh yes this feels like pretty much all the strength they've got left. All their best quality troops. The Pharaoh's guard. The Pharaoh's bowmen. The actual decent quality. Because you know the Nubian cavalry are actually okay. This is an alright army they've pulled together. Albeit they've had to draft in a 26 year old kid to lead it because I just keep murdering literally everyone else. So we will see how that plays out and we will see if Julianus Vatinius can also seize control of Jerusalem next time ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime I've been John. This has been many a true nut. This has been Rome Total War. Thank you very much and goodbye. We're going to build a large green park as a memorial to the bloody place that wouldn't stop burning down. Oh gosh darn it the building next door is just catching fire instead.
Can I just kind of demolish a church or something to make room for it? Because I will. Then next to the magnificent city hall, a giant statue of me. 